It is not our job to cover up the ugliness of the world. Rather, it is our duty to highlight the true beauty of it, quoted by the talented artist Thomas Yu In in his biography. The Great Art is a documentary that focuses on the cultural local arts of Malaysia. It introduces intricate painting, traditional architect, antique furnitures that became significant parts of Malaysia culture's upbringing. Charles Chom started painting at the age of five, inspired by the first movie he ever saw. It was a story about an artist with a magic brush and everything he painted became alive. He painted birds and they flew away. He painted fish and they swam away in the river. Finally, he painted a woman, she became alive and they fell in love. When Charles came home that day after the movie, he started to draw a portrait of the painter on the floor with some cake powder belonging to his mother. That was his first portrait. After working as an editorial artist for a few years in Kuala Lumpur, he went to France to paint. In 1993, he set up his studio in the old quarter of his hometown Malacca, Malaysia and named it the Orang Utan House. Charles Chom's works are based on the philosophy of yin and yang, the duality of life and the attraction of opposites. He believes that everything has another side, visible or not. The yin and yang paintings are actually multiple paintings. They are in fact two paintings on one canvas, with each other facing the opposite direction. I believe that drawing is thinking and painting is feeling. Therefore, I draw what I think and I paint what I feel. As there is no feeling without thinking, there is also no painting without drawing. Sometimes I feel more comfortable calling my works painted drawings rather than just paintings. Charles Cham, who had previously lived and painted in France, New York, and Budapest, is currently based in Malacca. His works are in private collections in more than 40 countries. Wabai Nyonya is a calling, uh, it's something that we use to address the minority group known as, also known as the straight spawn Chinese or the Pranakan Chinese. In my term of definition, I would say that they are a localized form of Chinese whereby they are Chinese of ancestry, but they have somehow or other accustomed to the local lifestyle and Hence, it is known, or they are known as the Baba Nyonya today. Most of the artwork seen behind the interior of the house came from different backgrounds, especially with different Chinese woodworks. There are also colonial style furniture influenced by the British. These are also mixed with Malay woodworks, as most furniture were done locally. A combination of East and West is what reflects the whole Baba Nyonya identity. Formosa was a Portuguese fortress located in Malacca, Malaysia. It's among the oldest surviving European architectural remains in Southeast Asia. The Porta de Santiago, a small gatehouse, is the only part of the fortress which still remains today. The fortress once consisted of long ramparts and four major towers. One was a four-story keep while the others held an ammunition storage room, the residence of the captain and an officer's quarters. Most of the village clustered in townhouses inside the fortress walls. As Malacca's population expanded, it outgrew the original fort and extensions were added around 1586. The fort changed hands in 1641 when the Dutch drove the Portuguese out of Malacca. The Dutch renovated the gate in 1670, which explains the logo Anno 1670 inscribed on the gate's arch. Above the arch is a bus relief logo of the Dutch East India Company. When the fortress was handed over to the British in the 18th century, the English were wary of maintaining the fortification and ordered its destruction in 1806. The fort was almost totally demolished, but for the timely intervention of Sir Stamford Raffles, the founder of the modern Singapore, who was sent on sick leave from Penang to Malacca in 1807. Because of his passion for history, the small gate was spared from destruction.
Shanghai Douyin Shen in Shanghai, China was established in 1990. Till now, it has been 117 years. In 2014, they opened their first branch for the first time in overseas, which is in Malacca, Malaysia. The reason they chose Malacca is because although the diversity of ethnic is very different, Malacca has very rich cultural heritage and is rich in cultural style. Moreover, in the Chinese society, their protection and support of traditional painting and calligraphy is very ideal. Therefore, Douyin Shen being brought to Malaysia, especially Malacca, this place, is a very good vision. From 2014 until today, we had held more than 30 exhibitions at our art gallery. We don't only focus on paintings in every exhibition. As long as the concept of the artworks are related to culture, or they promote the relationship between China and Malaysia, we will exhibit it. We mostly exhibit historical exhibitions. For instance, the photo exhibition about Tun Razak traveling to China for the establishment of diplomatic relations in 1974. Besides, we also did an exhibition on the topic How did the Malaysian overseas Chinese go back to China to support China's anti-Japanese war during World War II? It was a photo gallery about that history. Other than playing the role of promoting paintings of cultural arts and calligraphy, Douyin Xuan in Malaysia wishes to expand the pattern to other categories. So that our society can know more about cultures of other ethnic groups. At present, we are exhibiting artworks by a local artist, Mr. Lai Tiu Xiong from Kuantan. He normally does traditional ink painting, but he is currently drawing landscape of the east coast of Malaysia. The combination of these two elements produces a different effect. Tom Siu Win has been active in Malaysia art scene for more than four decades. Tom explored over forty countries across four continents in search of new direction in his artistic development, while researching for new possibilities and experimenting with different approaches. He always infused with new vigor into his painting. Siu In started his solo backpacking journey around the world in the early 70s. During his three years and two months journey abroad, Siu In held art exhibitions along the way to help fund his trip. In the mid 70s, in an effort to raise art awareness, he started teaching art classes in his hometown, Klang. The successful art classes, however, were occupying too much of his time and mind. He decided to stop. Teaching classes and focus on creating artwork full time in 1986. It was during these productive years that Tom has started his Green Forest series, Flame of the Forest series, and Seaside series, shifting his focus from accurate sceneries, depiction into a praise to nature. In a new millennium, after his experiments with various types of medium, Siu In created a series of beautiful yet simple artworks, emphasizing on the free spirited lines gliding on watercolor paper. He acquired these unique strokes from his smaller sketches, incorporate them into full-size watercolor paintings. Uh, okay, so this is a family business, family gallery. Uh, gallery is run by uh, me, my fathers, and my brothers. Um, combinations of a uh, gallery, a house, a workshop, and our garden. So uh, this. Mainly displaying our artworks over here and our some other creativity works. Okay, so inspiration. Um, we have different creativities. Like if we go to it, the the stone seal seal stamp engravings. That one we draw inspiration from those old designs and old um, old books. Other other masters' works as well. And then for my father's work, he drew inspiration from nature. 
he draw, he draw a lot of this natural themes, landscapes and um, natural trees and things. You know, so the gallery itself is uh, create his creation rather than only his artwork. He not only paints on paper, he also draws the whole building.